Dota? Okay. Radiant team Here we are. Fan. It's uh, Charlie's Angels versus Riggedy Riggedy Wrecked game number two. Game number one Dota went Charlie's Angels' fan. way with a uh, little bit of a Drowvenge strat. <laughs> and we're getting... Dyer's ban. No Invoker ban this time, I think. That, that's good, because like, uh, like I said, the Invoker was never getting picked by Charlie's Angels. Meepo could be, probably not Phase 1. I don't Radiant know if you need to necessarily ban at Phase 1, but whatever. Probably misclick in Game 1. Oh, uh, what's what's <laughs> next to Invoker that you... I don't know. Did, I don't, Keeper I don't, of the Light, maybe? <laughs> Shakira? Is the other, I don't know what the other one is. Probably Ten so for Charlie's Angels, uh, Bristleback is... is just a meta pick that they ban Five almost every time. Seconds. Silencer is actually the most picked hero by Riggedy Riggedy Wreck. They Reserve picked it in four time. out of six of their games. Oh, nice. Um, they just really like it as a. They only play it as support. I mean, maybe maybe they have like a chance they could play it mid, but they've only played it as support so far. Although, okay, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call out my boy Your Bad Gaming here. Uh. If you did the research I did, you would know that the person who plays the silencer isn't currently playing on Riggedy Riggedy Wrecked right now, so you don't need to actually ban it. <laughs> Bam! Dyer's pick. Oh, tree. That's a different direction. Tree, man. We, like that, the hero had his day for like a few weeks where it was just first phase every time, and then he got his nerf, his move speed got Ten what? No, it was a 270 now. And yeah, no one, no one wants to touch it now. Five 20. seconds. It, it, it's funny because it's like, I think at the start of 7.0 it was 300, or, or it might have been just the patch right before 7.0. It was 300, and then they they changed nature's guys, and they're like, oh, actually this hero is like a little ridiculous. And they kept nerfing his move speed, and, and now it's Crystal 270. Crystal Maiden. There's that. Dyer's pick. pick. Pretty good against tree and reveal, or in frostbite reveals. You know what I think? I think they like the Crystal Maiden. Maybe they ban Silencer to protect the Crystal Maiden a little bit. For the, for the ulti? 10 seconds yeah. to and, go. You know, in general. Um, then Five they ban Silencer. Like, oh, Faceless wow, Void! They ban Silencer really weak to Bristleback. Radiance so Bristleback too. Okay. Fair enough. But you said they banned the Bristleback all the time, right? Not the they, they really. They, they've almost always first phase banned Bristleback. I'm not sure what this void is about. I feel like void is too low damage. Ten oh, yeah, oh, it's good seconds to go. You kind of want heroes Five to seconds. hit pretty hard so that you can get through living. Void does not do that, but reserve it's, uh, time. Synergy. Well, also, the, the other way tree. to go is dots, right? For living yeah, armor. Dots. Yeah. <laughs> tree has two roots. That's dire really team ban. Good synergy pick. I don't think it's. Brawl against. As Jarrowist Strat is going in a much different direction. A lot of team fight for R3 right now. Or I guess the team. Seconds to go. a menace for Void in lane if that's offlane Void. Five Probably best off to put in carry if they're going to flex it. I, I would be surprised if they do that. It, um, just from what I've seen from Charlie's Angels, it's almost always a uh, hunter, faceless void in the offlane. I would be surprised if they went a different direction here. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, Jakuro is uh, really troublesome for bad. void. Right, just like the dot damage. So, like, he, faceless void good against burst damage, right? Because you can just queue it off. Yeah. But so Jakuro you... can just kind of slowly whittle him down, right? Yeah, you only you only queue off, I think, percent of the damage that Jakuro does. Ten. Seconds to go. Two seconds, five second spells, I think. Five, five second seconds. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So it's two, yeah, two seconds for time Reserve lock. Time. Liquid fire, five seconds. Are they? Oh, yeah, they're both five seconds. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I play Jakiro. You play it? Okay. Yeah. Tinker Band. Tinker. Well, good against the void. Boom, it's good. I don't know if they have a tinker player. Ditch doctor. Ban. It's like they're banning Chrono Synergy. I, I feel like there's just like too many heroes that are good. Like, like, are you gonna ban every hero that's good with Chrono? I, I don't know. What else is there left? Lich Invoker. Ten seconds They've to stole go. the Jakira. Phoenix is good. 
Yeah, Phoenix. Elder Five Titan. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I guess maybe like they may not play a lot of those heroes, but Timber's good. They banned the Timber Radiance themselves. Banned. So it's uh, I, I mean, I assume I think you you draft for your team usually when you play. For, Ten, yeah. Um, how, how do you feel about first phase picking both your supports? Five seconds. Uh. I always do it, but I like to have one be flex. Reserve flexor. time. Oh uh, yeah, so so if there's, if like you need a like an AA against the elk or the huskar or something, like you still have that option. Yeah, there's very there's very much two Dyer's schools of pick. thought on this. Um, most people I've talked to prefer to do one core one support. But the the thought, like a lot of people will say, if you pick both supports, then they know your lanes automatically. Then. Like, Ten everything is out in the open, and you can't counterpick their lanes, which I think is incorrect. Five but seconds. That's the argument I hear most. So, is assuming this is two supports for R three. Yeah, definitely. It's. It's. I, it, I mean, there's still some flex, right? In that tree could. Oh, yeah, I, I, that's true. Okay, but but assuming it supports, like even tree could kind of roam around a little bit right <laughs> like you're not locked into something as tree into a certain Radiance lane pick. yeah that's true invoker. Slitch. Oh. oh invoker okay. pick. so invoker i don't like this invoker part is, is that is that a little early no it's just harder to void because of chrono and because of that crappy time dilation spell Ten then seconds it's hard into maiden because she can inst she can instantly kill Five not instantly but seconds. she can automatically kill your fire spirits and then she has high range on her spells which means if she has good Reserve positioning time. you're unlikely to hit her with your AOE spells. Same kind of goes for the lich. Like if you're going to hit the void with your spells, for instance, then you're probably not hitting the maiden and the lich with your tornado at the same time, kind of thing. So Invoker is is Luna. balanced somewhat around his spells Radiance being AoE, and you, you want to be able to hit them, hit multiple heroes with your spells. Right. One one thing that maybe is in their favor for Invoker is I, the, the hero is real susceptible to ganks in the in the early game, and Dyer's ban. okay, so it's a Drow going the other way this time. Well, okay. How how does that fit into the R three lineup here? I mean, it obviously helps Invoker in the oh, mid lane quite a bit. Seconds to go. Uh, I feel like this the Five the gust seconds. is super valuable matchup, but they're gonna have a lot of high armor here. Reserve time. I don't know if the damage is gonna be like that big a, big of a deal. <laughs> like they can even ice armor the. Radiant team ban. Well, that's 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 what we said about the last game, right? It's sort of flipped this time. Yeah, and I think the Lich did a lot last game too. So we'll see. I think it's a hard try. Ten game. seconds to go. Box the ban here from Charlie's Angels. Five seconds. Yeah, they don't like these silences. Silence. Reserve time. So presumably R three looking for a off laner. Uh, what what do you think kind of pulls it together for them? What a, what kind of hero do they need? Do they need uh, I guess they they got some team fight. They got some lockdown with the Radiance tree, pick. but they don't really have like a targeted stun kind of thing. Like it's. I would have liked the Venomancer that they banned, but <laughs> but they banned it. So, I don't know. Ten uh, seconds. Kind of want Weaver. thoughts. Oh, that's hard. Dyer's pick. I mean, it's it's good. I think probably against everything except the void, but the void makes it really hard. Yeah, uh, Weaver is very sad when he gets caught in a crowd now. Yeah, because you don't even reveal if you're Five Just get seconds. dumped on by Eclipse. 
They didn't ban. Is this another Zero's TA gone. game? For Charlie's Angels? Uh, I don't but, think he picked TA in a Jackie, uh, kind of ever. But it's really good against the Invoker mid. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's. The, I know what you're saying about the Shigeru, but yeah, it TA just so good against Invoker mid. I, that, the that's other, why the other, or there's a few co counters to Invoker mid, but one of them is the puck that they banned. <laughs> I I don't think I've seen Shadow Ninja play puck. Um, he plays Sniper a lot. He plays TA. Um, trying to think. Seen him play. Well, Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger is another hero who plays a lot. Sniper should be good here, except against the weak, probably. But all the other heroes, Sniper Ten should, should have to go. a lot of fun against, and the, they have oh, the chrono. Oh god, okay. Uh, this is actually, a, I believe this is a Charlie hero. So I think they, yeah, they're, they're swapping roles. Putting uh, Charlie on the, on the mid, Arc Warden. Shadow Ninja on the Luna. I don't know Arc Warden too, too well. How does, you know how it matches up here? <laughs> Dude, I, I like, I was a huge Arc Warden fan when you could do the rapier thing, and then once they removed that, I just stopped playing the hero. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, I, I think if, I think it does pretty well against Boker. I, I feel like you can, I don't know, like, you can just kind of throw out your, uh, Whatever that I don't even know what this ability is called. The the ghost go. thing that comes out from little area. That's like a techie's mine or Five whatever. Seconds. Spectral remnant dagger. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever it's called. <laughs> I feel like that's real annoying for invoker. Uh, and I, just in general, that hero is annoying. I, I like if you're good at that hero, that that's just an annoying matchup almost no matter what hero you are. I mean, it's because he's a rat, right? So basically, are we saying? Basically, we're saying, do they have enough catch for an arc? They have tree plus sunstrike plus weaver. I feel like that's pretty good. I don't know. So we'll see. I think drow gust is also again, like if if gust is good this game, or if the gusts are thrown well this game, then this should be interesting. Success. Oh. Sad when you throw out that sunstrike and everyone's already out of the phone. Wow! I think with the strategy time, everyone's just ready, ready to yeah. move out. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta throw it out right away. But uh, it looks like it's gonna be a dual lane. It's something a little bit different from Charlie's Angels, at least from the games I've seen. The it is a lich, right? So void lich. lich. I mean, yeah, that is what you want to do with lich. I, I agree. I like it. Deny form from the carry. And so it'll be mostly I think just Luna kind of on her own against against this weaver. Sim. I mean maybe she'll come down every now and then, it's but I think it looks like she'll probably just kinda get what she can in the jungle. Oof. Chunked. Well. He and he has no style yet. It's quite a bit of damage. Yeah. Oh, he does have two sets of tangos, so maybe not end of the world for him. It's just got to make it to five minutes, right? Yeah. So again, no no big aggressive moves coming out from either side. They'll just happily begins. take their runes. Uh, Hunter. <laughs> oh, he, he still wants to place his ward. But, well, tree... maybe you can see him? Depending on where he tries to go here. No, he, he's just going to hang on to it for now. I, I don't know. I, I feel like he, he had to be shit or get off the pot, man. Like, at this point, they're going to see the ward, right? Like, they're going to be, oh, this guy is walking to lane with an observer ward. Let's give it to the lich. Like, at some point, they're going to be like, oh, he no longer has the observer ward. I now know where it is. Like, okay, there he goes. Oh, he, he, he faked it? But, but he did. Oh, he put it in his backpack. Maybe they won't notice. I don't know. <laughs> no. It's like you you put in the backpacks thinking that they won't notice, right? Like why else do you put in the backpack? I think tree is not useful here if he's not punching. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's only it's only point four reiteration at level one, so you might as well be punching. You should probably have a what's that venom orb thing? Uh, orb of venom. Yeah. Oh, but he does get go. quite a There's few hits. Oh, he could have got the third hit. I think Denied. on that lich. Definitely could have. But uh, I, yeah, I don't I don't like this item build for for tree. Uh, the two tangos start and nothing else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tangos have natural anti synergy with the tree. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, okay, not paying attention, but Weaver dies for first blood here between just the CM and the Luna. I, I, I gotta say, I don't, that shouldn't happen, right? No respect for the, for the Sentry Ward, potential Sentry Ward, and no respect for the Frostbite. Frostbite's Man. really good against Weaver. Storms and heals. So, I, I mean, I didn't watch any of that. I'm just gonna guess he uses... Kuchi aggressively, and then CM comes behind, gets a frostbite, or whatever. And I, I don't know. It, come maybe he didn't think CM was there, got a little too much harass going. I don't know. I don't know. Like, it does, is Luna versus Weaver a lane that you think should be that hard for Weaver? Um, I don't know. I mean, he should be able to survive it, but I don't think he should be able to farm too, too much. Uh, uh. Well, it's all the same because especially thing. with the CMR, like, Lucent spam actually does kind of a lot of damage. Oh, and they're trying again. Frostbite comes out, but this time he scoops you. I, I guess he may know where the sentry is at this point. Runs yeah. to the left into the trees. But it's, like I'm mentioning, like, Weaver is... This is annoying, though. Points. Oh, another Frostbite, yeah. but... Like, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't take harass very well, so... Um, it's actually kind of a hard lane for him. He should, like, if he hides in the right spot, he should be able to get a lot of a golden blade. He shouldn't be able to get far, like, you might expect a Weaver to. So what we saw in game one from uh, Shuzori on the Centaur, he recognized that, that there was a lot of kill potential in that lane with the Venge of the CM. And when he was playing Centaur, he, he would just kind of hide in the trees. He would just make sure he was in XP range, but not necessarily visible. He did that really well. Uh, it, it feels like with him on the Weaver, he, he feels like he should be able to get some farm, be in lane. And he's he's not as scared as, as perhaps he should be. Is that... I think that's fair? Yeah, I, I, yeah, definitely uh, not calculating the damage. There we go. Well, going and Boker's having a good time mid. He really oh. is. Yeah, he's he's got a ton of last hits. And Lucian Rune will do that. Lucian Rune, Drow Aura. Oh, Drow Aura, yeah. <laughs> Can hear that. Ar Arc Warden doesn't have the best of uh, base damage. It's pretty average. I, I actually, I mean, some people may find it okay. I, I really dislike his attack animation Ooh. for a ranged hero. Oh man, not quite catch that, but yeah, Dave going down here. The draw ranger not respecting that is uh, supports right away. So Jakiro, did he did he rotate to get that bounty or something? And uh, yeah, Jakiro wants to get the bounty. The tree went top to soak top. I don't like how much the tree is soaking without punching. Especially because Drow is very much dependent on level six. Yeah. And Weaver's. Is, uh, it... But just level three on this Weaver. Luna already level five, but now they're gonna try to make a move onto him, getting the root out. But uh, oh, Luna with that speed. This skill be build is incorrect too. Living armor. Which which ones? Uh, the, the, tree, oh, the tree. The tree needs leech so that he can. Fight him so you can gank and get kills. A lot of trees, I think, get lead seed at level one. In fact. Uh oh. Cross been up and the loosen bee comes down. That's a second death here for Excuse me, on that weaver. It's not gone great for him in this off lane. Time oh, I think money. he's uh, reaching his potential. Ooh, stun strike. <laughs> but Fancy Bones is gonna run into the river instead of back the way he came. Ah, nice read by him. Salve up as well. That very much looked like a dodge. A dodge. 
Oh man, again the Weaver goes down, but it's gonna cost Luna his life, and that's a lot. 454 gold this early on. Going into the pockets of the tree. Yeah, really great for the tree. Um, I hope the Weaver's not tilted so from America. Uh, how tough this lane is gone. Kira, though, it, feeding him. Oh, he gets the. It's, it's not gonna be enough to take out that Faces Wood. Dry Ranger trying to man up against this Lich, though, but here comes the he Void from the win. back. Oh, he does get it. No uh, title, oh, nice he gets a south. Nice be nice for him there. But, well... This is, I think, where it gets a little bit hard going back to, uh, to mid lane for Invoker once the uh, Arc Warden has his ulti available. So, like, at any point, he can just, like, pop that and spam so many spells on you. And an illusion ring. <laughs> Again, <laughs> and they win lanes. You know, illusion rings just dominate. Oh, they, they they last. They last long. They, it's like a minute, sixty seconds, I think. I don't know. It, it, it feels like they shouldn't last that long. I should know this. I'm gonna wiki it. Like... Trade it. Trying to go on the slow. Oh, but she pops the eclipse though. Okay. That's a dead tree. Ooh, so much damage. I feel like this laning stage has not been as well thought out for R3 as it was in game one. Maybe not as much direction to like what their supports want to accomplish or what they can accomplish, where they're strong, what they can do. But, yeah, uh, I think oh, Jackie, Jackie mutual Trigger destruction. Really, yeah, really strong support. Ooh. I missed it, but then it's probably fun to watch. <laughs> for whoever caught it. But it's, it's already pushing a 3k net worth advantage here for Charlie's Angels, who are... Wait, oh no, Jakiro again! The Lich was so low, is Drow going to be able to get him? He will get the return kill. Something. Not quite six on the spaces boy, but he's very close. Jakuro's trying, I feel like we need more punching. Or punching out of the tree. He's, he's trying too, but uh, he's he's level five not as many at this point in the game. But I feel like he hasn't yeah, he hasn't done as much as I don't know. Maybe you ain't normally see. Hunter, we'll have to time walk off that damage for now though. He has a hundred. And you gotta, if you're a support, you gotta use your nukes. Slitch Asshole is just about level six. So, both these offlaners, and, and they they could combo something nasty up with the, the Chrono into the Frost. Uh, whatever it's called, Chain Frost. If they get the right Chrono. Yeah, Chrono is going to be. Radiant's top tower has been destroyed. Top tower will be taken down by Shadowlands here on this Luna. Denied! And, well... Hunter on the void, maybe sizing up if he has an opportunity here. As, ooh, Kiss is getting a little aggressive on Charlie mid, but... Go back off. For the most part, heroes are showing. Oh, there's the Crowdo onto the Drow Ranger, and there's the Chain Frost as well. Will we get the bounces? Wow. Yes, he will, but not quite back onto the tree. He'll live. I feel like uh, the Luna should, should stay in lane because that was really strong. She can still maintain the amount of farm she was getting. There. Yeah, still not quite level 6 on the Weaver as. Oh man, Charlie picks up the. Yeah, uh, just with that. <laughs> when he pops the Tempest double and he gets like the double spells, those actually do so much damage. The double flux, especially if like you can't stand next to anything, you, you're just dead. Yeah, flux hurts. Middle tower is being attacked. Definitely a lot of damage. Fancy bones, and it's actually a rotation now coming from the Crystal Maiden, level five and a half. The bottom lane. Maybe try to defend this as Shakira puts some liquid fire in, but she's gonna get frosted up. 
comes in on the void, but he does get hit by the ice path. And now he's gusted up. He needs to be careful. Getting shut down by the drought. Does she have enough? She does. That is something R3 really needed after how this early game has gone for them. A bit of a misstep by Charlie's Angels. That Luna is uh, going to be a problem. He's got a pretty good farming clip. It, it does have to be said, uh, the Invoker does have his Midas up at this point, but Charlie on the Arc Ward is well ahead of him. He's has his own Midas as well, which looks like he got, uh, I didn't watch the timings, but it looks like at least a minute or so before the Invoker as Jakira was going to go down again, but the return kill will be there onto the Crystal Maiden, who's actually worth quite a bit more gold at this point. Not the best CS you would like to see out of your safe lane uh, Drow here, but... Yeah, she, she's not a good, she's not good last lane. I may do a lane. It was a hard lane, actually. Yeah, a hard lane for her, but she's getting at least some kills now. Oh, coming forward is the... Chrono is just now available, but he gets gusted up and he will back out. It, it was like one second on the cooldown for Chrono if you wanted to commit it when he time walked on top of her. Good timing. Crystal Maiden and Lich still backing up this uh, void. And, and, uh oh. Oh, okay. I lagged a little bit. Good enough. Oh, there's a girl. Nice. Chain Frost. Oh, perfect. Well played there by Charlie's Angels. They'll pick up the Drow and the Jakiro. Tree oh, and Protector three. shows up to try to help, but it's, like it's just. It's three dead. On the side of R3. Now they can push this tower as well pretty safely. Oh, wow, okay. That was an interesting sun strike. Um, but yeah, I mean, Luna's just farming up all she can in the jungle. She's happy. I think, uh, you were talking about they usually win their early. I think they won their uh, This, honestly, yeah, this, this looks like more of the Charlie's Angels that we've seen, or I've seen at least from week one to three, it's a bit more like uh, the way the previous matches have gone, and well, R3, they, they played really well in game one, they still have time to turn this around. Uh, I, I, the Invoker has, uh-oh, Lux stuff onto him, he needs to go swap, there it is, okay. He'll be okay. No detection on the Arc Warden, or the Crystal Maiden. Dyer's top tower is under siege. But uh, yeah, they're, they're both their cores, the, the Invoker, Drow, about 2,000 net worth behind, 14 minutes in, of the uh, Luna Arc Warden on Charlie's Angels. So far, so good on the Chrono Spears. <laughs> they do get the Crystal Maiden here. The meatball and the... Oh, and there's... Okay. Okay. They get a Lich Go. So both supports dead for Charlie's Angels, and maybe they can push this tower now with the Jakiro and Drow here. Putting out the Liquid Fire. Not really much. Now Glyph comes out, but no Chrono, so Hunter can't really do too much. Maybe he tries for a cheeky guy here. Thinking about it. Ice path up. No, table taken. Ooh, that a nice top tower is under attack. And they're pressuring top, but Luna's wrapping around. She has Eclipse. This could be dangerous. She oh, she thinks about it. There she goes. And that's a dead Invoker. Oh, coming out from CM as well. And that's a dead Weaver. Oof. Maybe a, a little bit too much. They Charlie's knew that no one else could possibly be there since they saw them bottom. And making the wraparound with that Luna Eclipse. R3 with uh, kind of a misread on, on uh, what was about to happen there. Oh, wow, yeah. It's 8,000 net worth advantage here for Charlie's Angels. About 15 minutes into the game. And, well, Invoker catches the CM with the tornado. 
gets Frostbitten up, but here comes Weaver, and this should be... Oh, Sunstrike. There it is. Something. But the bottom tier one, maybe me pushing it by Charlie's Angels. Our corner dropping that magnetic field. Even with our corner. I don't think trading bot is good for trading or bot for mid. And they're gonna get a little bit of damage here on this tier two. Void coming in though, they need to be a little bit careful. Here's Luna as well, and there's that. There's no way that CP is gonna come through. Maybe if he dual for the day. I'll take that. Antibone's just all up in the jungle on the raiding side, but he'll he'll be able to TP away. And it will be actually a deny. Okay. We've got some pretty good rat game in R3, so maybe they can, uh, maybe they can split and farm, wait fights while while they're behind. Oh, he gets the. Oh, he barely catches the Weaver, but does he have the damage? There's another Sakuchi up, and it's there's no, there's no follow-up damage. It's it's just not enough. So Chrono is down. Is this an opening for R3 now? Possibly. Not that R3 even wants to fight necessarily. Eclipse is almost up. I think R3 is. This is a rat game. They got Invoker, they got Charlie, they got Weaver, they got Jakuro. There's no reason they can't rent this out and avoid the Chronospheres. It's uh, so. probably the game plan that they want. So, for Charlie's Angels now. Dino Ninja just pushing out this top wave as the supports from Charlie's Angels are, I don't know, just kind of hanging out mid, perhaps anticipating something might go down here. But, uh, no, R3 is in the area, but I think they're just going to push out this wave. I don't think they, they want to do anything. This looks like it could be a smoke here from Charlie's Angels, though, as they group up around their shrine. It is five of them, and it's without Chronosphere, so maybe they're thinking R3 won't expect it. So here's the five-man smoke. They do have the Eclipse available. See, and they're just going to run right down mid at this Jakiro, but he's already running away. He does get caught by the... Oh, the Ice Path! Is it, it's just going to be a dead Jakiro. R3 doesn't need to engage, though. Because they're happy with the Jakiro kill. Oh, wow. Tree. Gets a big ult off, but there's no one there. Drow gets the gusting. Yeah, and the tornado. Cool. Weaver kind of TP back in towards the shrine as the ult comes out from the Crystal Maiden. But Invoker's in a lot of trouble. He gets bashed up by the Void and he's dead. Your page in history they do get the Crystal Maiden and the Lich in return. Patience but that's the result. Invoker. They're killing a lot of these supports. Not sure. Time is many. there. But I feel like uh, if whenever they see five people on Charlie's Angels, there should be someone. Should... So got the draw around. The yeah, heroes are hit buildings. Scooters are in a lot of trouble here. He just knows. And that, that's not even the real arc order. That's just his double. Yes. TP's in on him and it just takes him out. That, that feels so bad. Yeah, that's scary. So it was a five-man smoke, just going back to what happened earlier, by Charlie's Angels at your Jakiro tanked, and even bought a lot of time, like you could kind of see it was all five of them. And yeah. it felt like they were unsure if they wanted to commit afterwards, when maybe they should have just left it as, as they get this Crystal Maiden kill. Like I don't know. Uh, I It just... The Jakiro is dead. That that's like, you know, spilt milk. So is getting two support kills for the Invoker worth it? I, I, probably not. He's level fourteen uh, at this point. It's maybe if not. you're maybe when you're down. Cold yeah, okay, so we can look back. The gold kills it was actually three eighty and three twenty gold for those two okay. kills. Invoker is worth three ninety. So worth. <laughs> sure. You could say what. You, you, you can make the argument at least. If you count Jakiro is already dead there. So they should probably dodge. They probably know that the other two. 
Yeah, and, and Tree can kind of scout this out. Is, oh, but there's a sentry there. He may be just walking into his death. He'll get his own ward up, but that's going to get caught out. And he does get his own, oh, but the, the silence on. Do they have enough damage to kill the void before he can get. Oh, he gets the chrono off. But he goes down. He didn't He didn't queue. He didn't queue off the damage. And now uh, the Lich is dead as well. A big ult coming out from Crystal Maiden. And she will go down to the dot damage, but she does get the kill on the Jakiro first. The Eclipse comes in from Luna, and she will clean it up. As, wow, four dead, four R3. They looked for a moment like they might be able to take that fight, but again, it's, well, if you look at the, the net worth, the XP change is actually pretty close to even. It, it is still favored for Charlie's Angels, but for uh, four deaths on uh, R3 versus three on Charlie's Angels, it, it could have been worse. Yeah, I, I think, uh... R3 made a kind of a weird call there, like trying to fight, trying to 4v5. Radiance um, bottom tower is being while attacked. the Weaver was splitting, on the, 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 the wave wasn't pushing up for the Radiant the structures of any have been fortified. Radiance bottom tower. Kind of a weird build on the Weaver attacked. too. He has boots of speed. Usually you either see no boots at all or. And again, this this arc horde and tempest double just causing so much. He almost takes out the Chikaro, just causing so much mayhem. It's it's such a committal for R three just to deal with him. Doesn't even die to a full macro. Plan. That where it's on the the cores of Charlie's Angels are continuing to spiral out of control as they've caught out the stream protection in the mid lane. He does get his ult off, but it's. Not gonna be enough. Okay, there you go. Well, it's turned around there. Seemed like it. Yeah, get some decent damage under that faceless void, but he'll uh, heal up a bit with that morbid mask. Mid tier two now. Looks like the next objective, Charlie's Angels. Coming up. And the Chrono dropped down onto the Dry Ranger and also catches out the Invoker as well, but their damage isn't quite there and Hunter has to back away for the moment. Macrofire coming down. There is no Eclipse available for five more seconds on the uh, Luna. No deaths at the moment. Very friendly. Luna getting slowed up here. And uh, well, Arc Warden goes down. She pops the Eclipse, but she could be in danger. The da oh, no, she goes down and the Crystal Maiden as well. This is a really good fight from R3 suddenly. Yeah. That, that, that Weaver uh, went Paul deep to pick up the Arc Warden. So both of those 10,000 plus net worth cores on Charlie's Angels do go down there. Didn't quite catch the fight recap, but it looks like it, just from what I remember the net worth was at. It's like a 2 to 3k net worth swing at least. 4 R3 there, and they defend the tier 2 as well. It's a big fight. Um, they still have some catching up to do. The Luna has over twice the farm of the highest top tower is under siege. Creep hitter on, on R3. But they should be able to get a tower out of this. That's the thing about draw strikes, right? You can be behind and you can take the team fight and you get towers. Oh, even with that frost armor on this tower, it's gonna go down pretty quickly here. Deso on that weaver as well, helping out. Yeah, and you can't place on the rush. The other day, <laughs> <laughs> trying to grief my team. Haste. Well, for the moment, it doesn't look like that is quite the target for R3. No, just back off. Take this time to farm safely around the map. There is that ward right on there. Uh, that high ground spot between their two tier twos there. For Charlie's Angels, who. Well, let's see what their next move is. And actually, they are. Uh, it is uh, Roshan now for R3. Yeah. Is their vision? They kill us very fast. I don't I think Charlie's Angels can contest them. It's already dead! Really good call by R3. Dave picks it up, but it may cost them the Jakir. Oh! The Chrono! 
does catch two finally after the tornado initially, but he does get uh, hit by the deafening blast, which will prevent him from doing too much damage there. He just has been popped for the moment. Shadowbringers are coming in on the Luna, but he's getting so low, and he's cold snapped up and down he goes. He does have a triple kill before he goes down. Now Dave on the drow, and he will lose his second life, so only Invoker will survive for our three, plus the Aegis popped as well. Pretty good zoning spells. Like, there, both teams have like, such big choke point spells. You got the macro pyre, you got the chrono, and then all the stuff that combos with the chrono. You got the gust, the meatball. Where's the stuff going on? It looked for a moment there, like R3 may have just prevented the Chrono with that tornado coming out, but there just there just wasn't a follow-up like silence or whatever available and he still ends up catching a very nice Chrono here after he comes back down. Yeah, the EMP on the ramp was really helpful, but I think uh just fighting uphill is also a significant factor. Possibly closing in on this invoker. They should oh, see that he's ghost blocked off. Do they have detection? He's dust, dust, dust! Sir, use your dust! Frostbite! Oh, so close. Invoker will escape. Never feels good when that invoker escapes. Well. Even if they didn't get the Roche, Charlie's Angel still in a great position that. here. Girl dying. Oh, has, oh no, again. Oh, that our Gordon. I don't know, like, throw out those spells. Uh, like, oh, minus 100% attack speed. I can save your life. Well. Charlie's Angels now, just happily farming away. What's, uh, mm. I don't know, what, what, what do you think R3 has to do to get back into this game? Well, they need to rat. They rat hard. They just avoid team fights, you think? For the rest of the game, like, it's it's just like, one man Coronos, that's all you're getting? Yes, exactly. Exactly how they should play this game. They have the heroes to do it. Right, yeah, they have to commit big ults to make yeah, it happen. I mean, even Chronosphere is kinda hard to do because he doesn't have like a dagger or a shadow blade or anything. Yeah, and he is just sitting at level fifteen, so it's not like he's getting the twenty five down with the time walk range anytime soon. Not springing for an ether lance either. Thing is though, I see very often. Arcord, uh, Charlie on the Arcord is doing a really good job of kind of pushing out lanes himself. You can see it. Yeah. Taking that double and just being real annoying with it. Yeah. Counter push. Oh! Nice pick off. There's Crystal Maiden dead. But Charlie's Angel does not want to turn this into a rat game. They do full savage ranked. <laughs> Level twenty two on this Luna here is done quite a good job farming. Like even even Jakiro rats better than three of the heroes on Charlie's Angel. Once again, here comes Stem's Devil coming top, pushing out the waves. Mean annoying. Get those Maelstrom procs. Four stackings away forward. Dropping some of those ghost spark ray things. But it looks like it's time for Charlie's Angels to make a move. They're grouping up around the shrine. There's the smoke. Leading forward with Hunter on this void. He does see this nice blink. invoker. Quickly blinks away. But. Is he sticking around here? Oh no, oh, I don't know this is the play. Oh, that is... They're just not the right read from Invoker. He sees the 
that boy thinks you can maybe make a big play and get a solo kill on him, but yeah, it's just exactly what Charlie's Angels wanted, with four of them yeah. smoked up waiting for it to happen. Accidentally hurt paper. Now Charlie's Angels looking like they're trying to pressure this bottom tier three. Forty-five seconds left on the respawn for the Shakira though doing his best to kinda clear out the waves as they come. Shakira commits the ice path. Oh, there it is. There's the macro fire. And uh Luna coming, and it is a buyback committed. Oh Hunter! What are you doing with that courier, sir? They're not cheap. But it looks like they'll be happy with just the Invoker buyback for the moment. As Charlie's Angel will back away, and again, there is a tree on the side of R3, so any damage they got to that tier 3 is, just doesn't matter. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, more lane pressure while all these sieges are happening. Definitely there could have been one girl either mid or top or both. All the Jakarta's macro power in the wood. Yeah, it is Invoker with the Boots of Travel, so... Certainly he's... At least the one you're talking about that, that could be doing that. Uh, yeah, this game is very much about a lane pressure here. Um, especially, that's kind of the win condition that our 3 have. They can min max. Okay. This'll come in handy. Have uh, a chance. Otherwise, I'm not, I'm not sure they do. So, if the goal is to kind of pressure the lanes, split push, uh, what do you do? You, do you think Drow should maybe go for a different item here than the butterfly, or are you you okay with this? Oh, yeah, she should have like Shadow Blade, Ags. So maybe, well, maybe R3 kind of thinking they can still take a team fight here. Possible. I don't know. But um but they they can't see Yeah, that, that's true. Regeneration Shakiro getting a little antsy here coming forward with the ice map, but there's oh there's a Boker backing up, dropping the EMP, and maybe Hunter will back out for now. He doesn't want to commit the Chronosphere at the moment with Luna coming in as that last glaive will take down Jakiro and it's a Chronosphere that has caught out Weaver. Do they have enough damage to get him before he can get the time lapse off another stun? No, he gets it off and he will Sakuchi his way away. But it will be Jakiro. He should go this Hmm, and go take that, yeah. Dyer's bottom tower is under siege. Force in a direction that Dyer does not want to move. Okay. Interesting sample. Tornado coming out, catching on three. Find a little bit more space, but Drow's not committing to further pushing the top lane. She just kind of defended that tier two, and now she's out. Uh oh. Train. See him here. Hit by the flux, rooted up. <laughs> Thought about getting the overgrowth off, but down yeah, he goes. It's it's. Uh, I think it's a kind of a hard. Aspect the train is the counter ramp, um, but they're not pushing the side of the It could be popped here for the Luna. That's the big one. It's the 10 second, I believe. Yeah, and they are very close to now. Shoes are though, he's got the double kill. The both the sports are dead. Both Charlie's Angels. Tree going down, and Weaver though, he'll pay with his own life as. Tier 3 is dead, but it looks like that'll be the extent of the damage. Still, you have to commit that hard, right, to take the Tier 3. Otherwise, it gets healed up by the tree. Yeah. Definitely. That's a win. They, they lose their supports or poor anyway. So now Shrines are available as another option for Charlie's Angels to focus on as well here. And Ro Roshan is going to be near... A max respawn, not quite up yet, but it will be shortly. Respawn. Almost an unlucky, kind of an unlucky sunstroke because he would have seen the. Wow. Oh my god. Invoker! No! No! Like oh this. god, that's disgusting. Time is money.
gets killed off by the Tempest Devil. That he just doesn't have an answer for the blood though. He, he needs something for the blood though. He he can't have that happen. Kind of a misplay. Hero, <laughs> level 13, falling down here. It's nine second B could be committed here by the Luna, chasing down this trap, but she will get away. Oof. So Maiden almost actually dying to the Mant Illusions from the Drow, but with Shakiro down with Invoker dead, no buyback available on either. Try his angels marching down mid lane. I didn't even kill anyone. And that'll be the first lane of Rax. Perhaps sensing no buybacks available since they didn't come out to defend that, they're immediately going down here for the bottom. They still have a Chronosphere available, and he does catch two! Just barely, the Tree Protector and the Weaver, and this time they do have enough damage to take down the Weaver before he gives it off. The uh, Drow will get a return kill on the CM, but that's not going to be enough for now. The EKB popped by the space is but then he gets immediately hit up by that ult from the Tree, but the Drow just not doing any damage to him. Yeah, Ice Armor and Chin Noara. That's not enough. It's it's a second lane of Rax here. Charlie's Angels will take, 25k net worth lead. Strongly in command of this game. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a very hard game. R three needed to take risks earlier on, and they need to take even more risks now. If they if they, want a chance. <laughs> they do still have that tier two Violet's top. Escape. Now getting healed up by the tree. But 26,000 net worth disadvantage here. Fancy Bones sitting here next to this Roshan, so Charlie's Angels knows it's there. Well, I, I guess both teams know it, it's it's been max respawn time by this point. But that's that's the next objective. Take the Rosh, take the game. Appears to be the goal here for Charlie's Angels. Yeah, and Voke. they should have no trouble. Voke are doing the right thing here. Trying to apply some pressure. Should be too much fun. Ah, uh, just uh, no way they could possibly contest this Roshan. Let's see. Luna will pick it up, and she will go on to the Arc Warden. Mokra used the scan to dodge that from the Got quite a bit of time for his bots. He's thinking about running out here, but. Well. A little bit risky, you'll see the... No, he's, he won't get close enough. Blessings that the uh, royal warrior. Ghost Walk will reveal himself, so... Away he goes. Well, now Charlie knows that he's there, but he... Whatever, he doesn't care. Now Shadow Ninja knows. <laughs> Again, no care. detection. <laughs> like, whatever. Bad. We're just gonna walk down top. Ooh. Thought I'd catch the crystal mana, but she's still quite healthy. One last defense here from R3. Found this Takura on here, and I'm macro firing. Radiance top tower has fallen. Tier two has fallen. Here comes Charlie's Angels. All the ultimates are available. Chronosphere, Eclipse. Chain Frost. Shadow is just gonna stand inside that bubble. Pop it away. It's a blink ear on the Chrono, and uh, he will catch the Invoker. That's no buyback available on him for our Ranger as well. Four step away, but she will go down. She does have buyback, which she'll immediately use, but Weaver's down as well, and it's just not gonna happen, it looks like, for R3 here. Dave doing what he can, hitting away at this Luna, but it's the illusion he's hitting, as Too many I bubbles. believe. <laughs> I think they lost the bubble strat. Yeah, I think I think that is that is it for R3. That's the call of the GG. The blue bubble is all Other bubble heroes. Uh, I don't know, I can't, I can't think of any. I'll look it up later. <laughs>
But it will be a 2 nothing victory here for Charlie's Angels, who will move to, what is that, 4-0 and series. Uh, Super well played. Whatever group they're in. I don't, I don't know what group they're in. Div C group. But, uh, yeah, that'll, that'll secure them a playoff spot, and they'll play uh, Team Michael Bolton, Season 1 champions, for first place in the group next week. For Reader Direct, well... Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Reader, then, they, they played well in Game 1. I thought it fell apart maybe a little bit in Game 2. They, they perhaps knew that they had to win both games. I don't know. Maybe their heart wasn't quite in in game two, but still.